Super investors are investors with over 100 million in assets under management, and fortunately for us, the government actually requires them to reveal four times a year all of the moves they have been making in their portfolio. This gives us insights into the moves of investors like Warren Buffett, Bill Ackman, Ray Dalio, and Michael Burry. And for a while now, I've actually been noticing that some of the most bought stocks by super investors have been dividend paying stocks. So in this video, we're going to be reviewing the top 10 most frequently bought dividend stocks by the super investors. To analyze these stocks, we'll be using my spreadsheets from tickerdata.com and the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet. I'll also be sending out a free spreadsheet with details on the 20 most bought dividend stocks by super investors via my newsletter. You can sign up for both of these at the link in the description. Now let's dive in. So the most frequently bought dividend stock by super investors in Q1 of 2024 was actually one I was very excited about and that is because this was a company I actually recently added to my portfolio and I made an in-depth video on it not too long ago. So the stock that investors added to their portfolio was none other than UNH. And you can see when I plug in this ticker, all this data is going to automatically load in thanks to the help of the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets. Now, if we jump over to Seeking Alpha, we can see over the past year, the company's up around 8.68%, but if we look at them year to date, they are slightly down. And you can see for most of Q1 of 2024, they were actually trending downward, and I think investors saw there may be a potential opportunity. Now, as for me, I actually added in April when it was in the lower 400s, but it gives me a lot of confidence that super investors were buying the stock in Q1 of 2024. Again, it's pretty much confirmation bias for me. Now we have to ask ourselves, why was a stock so frequently purchased? Well, first off, let's go ahead and jump over to the dividend metrics. If we come up here, we'll go ahead and plug in UNH and hit enter. And you can see all this data is going to automatically load in. Now, right away, we can see the company doesn't necessarily have a high starting dividend yield. It's sitting at about 1.44%, so nothing too crazy. But the dividend growth has been absolutely unbelievable over the past 10 years. And for me personally, I'm looking to one day live off dividend payments. And in order to do that, I need to buy stocks that have a good history of increasing dividend payments year over year. And we can see the dividend payments for this company has gone from $1.05 per share to $7.29. And they have a 10-year dividend CAGR of 182 six percent and the free cash flow has been exploding as well if we look at the free cash flow versus dividends paid out we can see free cash flow yes it's exploding and it's easily covering those dividend payments for pretty much the past decade the free cash flow payout ratio has been staying within a 20 to 30 percent range it's very healthy if we jump over to my profitability spreadsheet we can see the five-year revenue CAGR in the double digits 10-year revenue CAGR in the double digits and earnings per share has been exploding as well going from around five dollars and 59 cents in 2013 all the way up to $24.12 in 2023. And something I really like about this, if you look at the revenue, yes, it's growing, cost of revenue is growing as well, but the gross profit ratio has been staying steady over the past decade as well. 10 year average gross profit ratio of around 23.92% and a gross profit ratio in 2023 of 24.48%. So they have even seen some improvements in the past few years. Now, finally, there is one more thing I wanna point out. If we come up here, on my stock screen or plug in U and H and hit enter. Yes, there is a lot I could point out. Obviously, great earnings per share growth, great revenue per share growth, great free cash flow per share growth. But look at the free cash flow yield for this company. It's currently sitting at about 5.3%. Now, if you're not familiar with free cash flow yield, it's essentially the free cash flow per share divided by the price per share. And as an investor, this is basically telling us how much free cash flow we're getting for the price we're paying for the stock. So it's essentially a valuation metric. Now, me personally, I consider United Health Group a quality stock. I think this is a stock that would typically trade at a premium. And to put this into perspective, let's look at another stock real quick. Let's look at Microsoft, MSFT, and hit enter. Now, if we come over here, we can see Microsoft's free cash flow yield sitting at 1.87%. So basically this is telling us this is a company that trades at a premium. You have to pay a high price per share for the free cash flow per share that you're going to receive as an investor. So typically quality companies have a lower free cash flow yield. It just means they're expensive. But when I look at UNH, everywhere I look, I see signs of a quality dividend growth company, growing top lines, growing bottom lines, phenomenal dividend metrics, and consistent profitability. So when I consider all those things and see a very nice starting free cash flow yield of around 5.3%, it's really not a surprise to me this was the most frequently bought dividend stock by super investors. Now, the second most bought dividend stock by super investors is one you're probably pretty familiar with like we all are, and that was Apple, stock ticker AAPL. If we jump over to Seeking Alpha, link in the description, we can see over the past year, the company's done pretty well. They're up around 9.52%, and obviously over the past 10 years, they've way outperformed the market, like we all know, up around 744%. Now, if we look at the dividend metrics, we'll come up here and plug in AAPL and hit enter, and we can see the starting yield for the company is one of the lowest that we'll see out of the companies on this list. It's sitting at 0.52%. 
but the company clearly has a very low payout ratio. Paying out dividends at the moment is not their highest priority. So what is their highest priority? Well, if we jump over to my stock screener spreadsheet, come down here and look at shares outstanding. We can see in 2013, their shares outstanding was close to around 26 billion. And in 2023, it dropped all the way down to 15.7 billion. And they also just announced one of the largest stock buyback plans ever. So clearly one of the highest priorities for this company right now is actually buying back shares. And this can actually be a really good way to reward shareholders. And let me show you why. If we jump over to the profitability slash income statement spreadsheet, if we come up here and look at revenue, we can see revenue in 2022 was sitting at about 394 billion, but in 2023, it actually dropped down by about 11 billion to 383 billion. But here's what's really interesting about share buybacks. If we jump back over to the screener tab, if we look at revenue per share in 2022, it was sitting at about $24.32, and in 2023, it actually increased $24.34. So despite revenue actually declining by around $11 billion from 2022 to 2023, we can see on a per share basis, it actually still increased because the company was buying back so many shares. So when they're constantly buying back shares, this is going to boost all the per share metrics like earnings per share revenue per share and free cash flow per share. And we have to keep in mind, it's also going to boost their ability to pay out dividends on a per share basis. So again, paying out dividends as of right now might not be the main focus for the business, but they have been increasing dividends at a decent rate over the past 10 years. And I think we could see even higher levels of dividend growth in the future. Now, the third most frequently bought dividend stock by super investors, again, is a popular one. And it's actually one of the largest positions in my personal portfolio. And that is Microsoft stock ticker MSFT. We go over to Seeking Alpha, we can see the past year has been really good for them. They're up around 33.26% and again over the past 10 years, way outperformed the market, up around 945%. If we jump over to our dividend spreadsheet, we'll come up here, plug in MSFT and hit enter. And we can see Microsoft again has a lower starting dividend yield like Apple. But I actually think this company is a little more focused on dividends than Apple is and I'll show you why again. Yes, low starting dividend yield but the dividend growth has actually been quite a bit better over the past 10 and especially over the past five years, pretty much close to around a 10% dividend growth rate for both of those timeframes. And of course, we can see that dividend growth is completely backed by free cash flow growth, and we can see this easily charted out here. Now, the free cash flow payout ratio has clearly stayed in a pretty healthy range over the past decade, currently sitting just a little bit above 30% at 33.29%. If we look at some of the key metrics on my stock screener, we can see revenue per share grown quite a bit over the past decade, and the same is true with earnings per share and free cash flow per share. Now the company has been buying back shares like Apple has, but it's not nearly at as high as of a rate. And again, they have a higher dividend growth rate, so I do think they're a little more focused on growing those dividend payments than Apple is. Something else we'd like to see is that debt to assets ratio has been steadily declining since 2017, and it's all the way down to around 14.56%. So this is a pretty healthy balance sheet. Now, Microsoft also recently released their latest quarter's earnings. If we jump over to one of the key slides from that earnings report, this is what I love about Microsoft. Microsoft is essentially a lot of smaller businesses all wrapped into one. Look at all these different business segments. And if we look at the growth rates for all these business segments, many of them are above 10 or even 20%. The growth they're seeing is absolutely phenomenal. So yes, the company is a little more expensive with a free cash flow yield sitting at about 1.87%, but it's still pretty easy to see why this is a favorite among super investors. Now, the fourth most bought dividend stock by super investors is actually one I haven't done a whole lot of research to prior to this video, but as I've dug in, there's actually quite a bit to like about this company, and that is Zoetis ZTS. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And again, you can see this data will automatically load in. Look how much the dividend payments have grown over the past five years from this company. Over the past five years, the dividend payments have grown a total of 198%. That's pretty mind boggling dividend growth. If we jump over to Seeking Alpha, we can see this company over the past year actually down around 4.14%. And over the past 10 years, they're up around 460%. If we jump over to the dividend sheet, we can see the company has a lower yield sitting at about 1% even. Well, look at the dividend growth. Again, it's pretty mind boggling. A 10 year dividend CAGR of 19.64% and a five year dividend CAGR of 21.4%. It's pretty hard to find companies with that high of a dividend growth rate. I can't think of any off the top of my mind other than just a couple. So we can see in 2013, this company was paying out around 20 cents per share. And in 2023, now all the way up to $1.50 per share. Now, one thing we do have to point out, the free cash flow is growing. We can see the 10 year free cash flow sitting at 12.55% but the five year is sitting at about 2.23%. So with a five year dividend CAGR of 21.4% and a five year free cash flow CAGR of 2.23%, what's the end result of that? Well, we can see the result of that is the free cash flow payout ratio has actually climbed up quite a bit higher 
over the past five or six years. We can see in 2018, it was as low as around 16.74%. That's a very healthy free cash flow payout ratio. But now it's climbed as high as about 46%, and in 2023, it was sitting at about 42.69%. Now, that's still a healthy free cash flow payout ratio, but it is worth noting that they're now having to use much more of their free cash flow to pay out dividends, meaning they have less free cash flow left over to reinvest back into the business or buy back shares. Now, if we look at the profitability of this company, it's actually pretty impressive. We can see pretty rapid earnings per share growth over the past decade, and the gross profit ratio has not only stayed steady, but it's actually seen some increases over the past decade as well. We can see the 10-year average gross profit ratio is really good, sitting at about 67%, and in 2023, it was actually as high as 68.28%, so pretty impressive metrics. Dividend stock number five, again, another popular one, and that is going to be Starbucks, stock ticker SBUX. And if we jump over to Seeking Alpha, this company has been a hot topic for a while now. We can see over the past year, they're down around 21.58%. And if you look right here, we can see in late April, they had a massive drop in their share price, going from around $88 per share to the low 70s. Now, why was this? Well, Starbucks reported a pretty poor earnings report during this time that scared off a lot of investors. And one of the big reasons behind the sell-off is we can see the coffee chain said it expects four-year global revenue growth to be at the low single digit rate, down from the prior forecast of around 7% to 10%. So that's a pretty big downgrade. Now, from a historical dividend perspective, we can see starting out, the company has a pretty nice starting dividend yield. It's sitting at about 2.82%, which is definitely above the average in the S&P 500. And we can see the 10-year dividend growth has been very, very good at 15.28%. They've gone from around 45 cents per share in 2013, all the way up to $2.16 in 2023. And now their dividend payment is sitting at $2.28. We can see the free cash flow payout ratio a little bit higher than some of the other companies we've looked at so far, sitting at about 66.17%. The payout ratio as a result of earnings sitting at 58.96%. Now, one potential red flag you may see when you glance at this is the five-year free cash flow CAGR showing negative 18.08%. Now, why is this? Well, this actually isn't necessarily the result of declining free cash flow. We can see it's more of a result of Starbucks simply having a phenomenal year in 2018. We can see in 2018, the company generated about $9.9 billion in free cash flow. In 2023, it was sitting at about $3.6 billion, which is obviously lower than it was in 2018. But if we look at where they were in 2013, they're sitting at about $1.7 billion. So clearly, overall, free cash flow is growing. 2018 was just a phenomenal year. Something else that jumps out is the free cash flow payout ratio over time clearly has something weird going on here. What was going on in 2020? Well, we can see in 2020, the company generated very little free cash flow, around $114 million, while the amount they paid out in dividends was sitting at about $1.9 billion. So obviously, free cash flow did not cover their dividend payment that year, so the free cash flow payout ratio was well over 100%. But since then, it really hasn't been a problem. Free cash flow has been covering those dividend payments. If we look at the stock screener, we can see the top line. Revenue per share has seen decent growth over the past decade. But one thing we do need to keep an eye on, the debt to assets ratio for this company has been climbing by quite a bit since 2013. We can see it's now up to around 83.54%, a little bit higher than I typically like to see it for most of my holdings. But something else I wanna point out is return on invested capital for this company is pretty good. This is essentially telling us how profitable are the projects that the company is investing in. And in 2023, it was sitting at about 27%. I mean, that's a really good return on invested capital. Stock number six was Union Pacific, stock ticker UNP. And this is a company that operates in the industrial sector. If we jump over to Seeking Alpha, we can see over the past year, they've done pretty well, up around 18.39%. And if we look at the past 10 years, up around 135%. And if we jump over to the dividend breakdown sheet, come over here, plug in UNP and hit enter. We can see the company has a starting yield sitting at about 2.21%. And the dividend growth has been pretty good over the past decade, going from around $1.48 to $5.20. That's a 10-year dividend CAGR of about 10.53% and a five-year of around 7%. So pretty solid dividend growth from this company. Now, the free cash flow has not necessarily been growing at a high rate. We can see in 2013, it looks like their free cash flow generated was at around 3 3.3 billion. If you look at 2023, it's sitting at about 4.7 billion. So yes, they have seen growth during this time period, but ideally it needs to be a little bit higher to sustain high levels of dividend growth moving forward. And again, we can see that free cash flow payout ratio over time since 2021 has been climbing up and it's now sitting at about 66%. So if free cash flow doesn't continue to keep up with the dividend growth, that free cash flow payout ratio will continue to increase, which isn't a good sign for the company. Now, if we look at the stock screener, we can see again, this is another company that has bought back a lot of shares over the past decade, going from around 926 million all the way down to around 
around 609 million. So this has definitely provided a boost to all of those per share metrics. Now, when I was looking at the debt to assets ratio, yes, we can see it's climbing. So I wanted to dig into it a little bit more. So if we jump over to my balance sheet breakdown spreadsheet again, like I already touched on, yes, that debt to assets ratio over time was climbing, but something that caught my eye quite a bit more was that current ratio. The current ratio is sitting at 0.81. And essentially what the current ratio does is it helps us understand how easily can a company meet its short term obligations. If a company has a current ratio of one, it means they can barely meet those short term obligations. And if it's quite a bit over one, it means they're in a pretty healthy shape. Now, current ratio is simply the total current assets divided by total current liability. So in the case of UNP, we can see total current liabilities a little bit higher than total current assets, leading to the current ratio of 0.81. So for a while, we can see they had a current ratio of over one, but this has been trending downward and it got really low in 2021 at 0.62, but it's climbed up a little bit over the past few years. This is somewhat an area of concern and something to keep an eye on if you're considering UNP. The seventh most bought dividend stock is a stock I absolutely love and hold in my portfolio, and that is Visa. If we go over to Seeking Alpha, we can see over the past year, this company's up around 19.15% and over the past 10 years, up around 413%. And I actually wrote a pretty in-depth article on Visa on Seeking Alpha the other day, but there's one point that I wanna make today in this video. If we scroll down, I wanna show you the growth of the digital payment market that's projected over the next decade. We can see in 2022, the market size of the digital payment market was sitting at 84.5 billion but in 2032, it's projected to be sitting at 505.3 billion. That's nearly a 20% compounded annual growth rate. So not only is Visa a great company, but their market is expected to explode. Let's go ahead and look at them from a dividend perspective. Come up here and plug in V and hit enter. And we can see the company has a lower starting yield sitting at about 0.75%, but phenomenal dividend growth. Sitting at about 17.35% for the 10 year dividend CAGR and the five year close to around 15%. Now we have to keep in mind, yes, the starting yield is low, but when companies increase dividends at that high of a rate, your dividend yield on cost continues to increase every single year. So before you know it, a lot of the times when you buy these low yielding companies with high dividend growth rates, the dividend yield on cost will eventually pass those high yielding dividend stocks because we can see in 2013, they're paying out around 35 cents per share. Look at them now, $2.08 per share. And this is completely backed by free cash flow growth, which is the best part about it. Look at that 10 year free cash flow CAGR sitting at 22.68%, meaning their free cash flow payout ratio is only sitting at 19%. So they still have around 80% of their free cash flow left over to reinvest back into the business, which I think would be very wise for this company. If we look at the profitability sheet, we can see phenomenal gross profit ratio, basically sitting at 80%. So nearly all the revenue this company brings in is going straight to the bottom line. And if we look at the stock screener, like you'd expect, we see phenomenal growth in the earnings per share, revenue per share, and free cash flow per share. The company is also buying back shares, debt to assets in a very healthy range, and they are very profitable in the projects that they invest in. We can see return on invested capital in 2023 for them, sitting at about 29%. Now the eighth most bought company is one that a lot of people still don't consider a dividend stock, but it's true they are technically a dividend stock and it's one you should actually consider if you're a long-term dividend investor. And I'll explain why here in just a second, but that's Google, that's G-O-O-G. And out of the companies that we're gonna look at today, this one probably has the lowest starting yield, sitting at about 0.45%. And you can see there hasn't been any dividend growth, but that's because they just recently announced this dividend payment. Now, over the past year, the company's up around 42.64%, and over the past 10 years, up around 539%. Now, because they just recently announced their first dividend payment, there's not any dividend metrics to currently look at, so I went ahead and did the math to find out what these metrics are. We can see with their current dividend payment sitting at about 20 cents per share quarterly, that makes their annual dividend at 80 cents, and starting dividend yield at about 0.49% or 0.45% like we saw just a moment ago. But that puts their payout ratios at around 14%. Now here's why that's interesting. If we jump over to the balance sheet breakdown and look at debt to assets ratio over time, we can see for Google, it's ridiculously low. Their debt to assets sitting at about 7%. We can see total assets of 402 billion, while total debt is only around 28 billion. If we look at revenue per share, we can see it's exploded over the past decade going from $4.49 to around $24.34 in 2023. And we can also see the bottom lines like earnings per share and free cash flow per share have followed. So while this company is just starting to dip their toes into the dividend payment arena, the potential for dividend growth from this company in the future is absolutely massive. We don't yet know what management's approach to dividend growth will be, but if they choose to do so, they could rapidly increase those dividend payments over time. Our ninth most bought stock is AON, and this is one I wasn't super familiar with, but this company operates in the financial services sector. 
If we jump over to Seeking Alpha and look at the past year, they're down around 12.6% and over the past 10 years up around 216%. We can see this is another low yielding dividend stock, but very high dividend growth. So we really see a trend with these super investors. They love their dividend growth stocks. The free cash flow payout ratio is only sitting at about 15.36% and it's been staying low for quite some time and that's due to the very nice free cash flow growth they're seeing. Over the past five years, 17.09% free cash flow CAGR. If we take a quick glance at this company on our stock screener, we can see the free cash flow yield. Again, kind of a valuation metric looks pretty decent at about 5.5%. And again, this is clearly another company that is rapidly buying back shares. They've gone from around 311 million shares outstanding to around 203 million. So they bought back nearly 33% of their shares over the past decade. And then lastly, the 10th most bought dividend stock was the highest yielder on this list. And that is Philip Morris, stock ticker PM. We can see this company has a high starting dividend yield sitting at 5.14%. If we look at this company on Seeking Alpha, we can see over the past year, they're up around 8.6% and over the past 10 years, up around 14.15%. But now it is worth mentioning again, this company is going to provide most of its returns in the form of dividends. So if we jump over to the dividend breakdown, we can see again, high starting dividend yield sitting at about 5.14%. They've seen some dividend growth over the past decade. The 10 year coming in at about 3% and the five year at about 2.39%. So they've gone from around looks like $3.58 to now $5.20. We also have to keep in mind anytime a company has a dividend growth rate below the rate of inflation, and that company is technically paying out less in dividends every single year. Now, something that's pretty concerning about this company is if we look at the free cash flow versus dividends paid out, that free cash flow is barely covering those dividend payments every single year. And in fact, we can see in 2023, free cash flow came in at about 7.8 billion, while dividends paid out was about 7.9 billion. So free cash flow actually didn't cover their dividend payments in 2023. So we can see that free cash flow payout ratio slightly above 100%. Not a good sign for the company overall. We want to see it lower than that, obviously. Now, like most tobacco companies, they have a pretty good gross profit ratio sitting at about 63.35%. But overall, we can see there hasn't been a lot of growth in their top lines. We can see in 2013, revenue was around 31 billion. But if you look at 2023, it's only about 35 billion. So not much growth over the past decade. So there you go. Those are the top 10 most frequently bought dividend stocks by super investors in Q1 of 2024. Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below what you think of this list. And like always, if you like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on that allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.